Well, if you need guidance, you need to understand one very important principle. And this principle is found in Acts chapter 16. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm very thankful for GPS. I used to be a pizza delivery driver years ago, and I remember having to look at a map and, and write down all the appropriate uh, street names so that I, I could remember where it was that I was going. Um, now, I, I feel pretty young still, but for even younger people, you don't know what it's like to not have a GPS at your fingertips. You know, you, you simply type in an address now and you know exactly where you're going. Well, things uh, didn't always used to be that way. Uh, but anyway, I suppose it would be nice if, if God worked that way, right? If we didn't know what to do in life, that we could just kind of pull out this GPS and to tell us exactly where he wants us to go. And if I'm being honest with you, I think there are some Christians that act as if God has provided that kind of GPS. As some Christians, I think that they're, they're very confident when they say that the Spirit has led me. And over the years, it's been my observation that a lot of Christians end up making the mistake of attributing things to the Spirit that he didn't actually say. You see, it's important to know that the only source of infallibility is the Bible. The only surefire way to know that God has actually told you to do something is if he has written it down in his word. And what we learn from God's word is a very important principle about guidance. So let's begin reading in Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to, make, to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So here it is then, the all-important principle. Guidance is rarely received before you need it. Now before I expand on that, if you could hit the like button, that will push this video out to more people uh, that can be blessed by it. If you'd like to subscribe, if you find value, that would be great as well. Uh, but go ahead and smash the like button for me and that will push the video out. Now then, guidance is rarely received before you need it. I used to be a college pastor years ago and it was very interesting to me to observe that many of the students that, that I knew had, had their lives all planned out. You know, from their freshman year, uh, they, they knew exactly what they wanted to do. But then all of a sudden, when it came to uh, four years later, when they were a senior, they were going a completely different route. So when I have students that come along and tell me that they know when they're going to get married, they know what kind of job they're going to have, I usually say in my mind, okay, we'll see. Because it's very unusual for God to guide us before we actually need the guiding. When you look at our passage, understand that Paul had two shut doors before God made it abundantly clear to him in a vision where God wanted him to go. So God made it very clear to Paul, but not for a little bit. And this is very much like God, right? To, to show up last minute from our perspective. Because one of the things that God is very interested in is developing in our lives faith. And part of faith, at least sometimes, is like Abraham, not knowing where you're going, but still at the same time going. You see, Paul didn't know where to go, but he chose to turn a few door handles, right? Because he knew that you are normally guided on the job. I mean, simply just kind of sitting back and fantasizing about the future is not going to be helpful in any way. It's not biblical in any way. This is why we read in Proverbs 16, 9, that it says, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. We humans, we, we plan. We, we don't sit back. We don't just wait. We, we, we don't wait for God to drop a package on our front door that says, Go here. No, we make plans. And then we try to fulfill those plans. And then at the end of it all, we look through the rearview mirror of life and we recognize that God has been guiding and directing us every step of the way. Guidance is rarely received when we desire it. I mean, I had to think about that a lot lately. I, I have things that I want to do. I have plans that I've been, I've been praying about. I, I have all these things that I'm asking God to guide and provide me for. 
And I think that it is very important at this time within my life and maybe in yours that this text is a reminder that God rarely gives guidance until we need it. So friend, be encouraged. In time, you're going to walk right where his will is and then you're going to turn around and you're going to see how God has providentially guided you every step of the way. But just remember that very often God allows us to turn several door handles before he steps in and he says, okay, this is the way. A very important principle. Remember it. Well, thank you so much. God bless you in the way.